Hello there. The purpose of this video is to try to analyze and document my current understanding of the Telemark turn. I don't offer this as any kind of supposed expert. For full disclosure, I think I've been cross-country downhill skiing for about four winters and trying to make Telemark part of that for three winters with very little lift serve skiing along the way to speed up the learning process. But a sort of guiding mindset I've always had for my YouTube channel is to try to offer the advice to myself of two weeks ago that I wish I would have known just a little bit sooner. As a teacher, I sometimes have to think about things like the zone of proximal development, the curse of knowledge bias, and the benefits of peer learning. Sometimes the best teachers for beginners are other people that are beginning and have just started figuring things out. I think the experts might use some technical jargon that they assume other people are going to understand, or maybe they talk about things that you really can't understand until you've embodied certain sensations. And of course, I always want to heed what the experts have to say, but as someone who's not an expert, I hope that what I have to say can benefit somebody else who's fairly new to the Telemark turn. I also hope I can look back someday and appreciate where I've come from in my progression. And like I said, I just want to document my current understanding because if I don't do that now, I think some of what I understand right now might be lost to time as my understanding changes. So with those disclaimers out of the way, I want to talk about why turning even matters. And to me, there are maybe three reasons to try to turn. The first reason is to dodge that tree. So I guess that's kind of environment dependent, but wherever you are, you're likely to have some obstacles. The second reason is to be able to steer your skis into a horizontal traverse when you come to a steep slope so that you can slow your speed down. Because these first two reasons to turn are related to safety, it's important that absolute beginners waste no time in developing some skills to be able to turn depending on conditions. The basic plow or stem isn't always going to slow you down very well, and parallel turns likewise aren't the best in all conditions, unless of course your heels aren't free. And telemark turns aren't the safest, easiest turn in all conditions either. This brings me to the third reason to turn, and that's to be able to ski with aplomb in a variety of conditions and terrain, so you can stay safe, have fun, and possibly even look good while you're out there. There's definitely an element of vanity, or maybe let's just call it style, to doing good telemark turns. So next I want to try to offer a comparison of alpine bindings and parallel turns to free heel bindings and telemark turns. Perhaps this is an oversimplification, but to me, when doing parallel turns, the easy part is balancing, and the harder part that takes more concentration is making the ski turn. For telemark turns, it's the opposite for me. The skis turn pretty easily. The hard part is balancing and making those skis not turn too much. The consequences of this are that alpine turns feel much easier on hard pack or firm snow like you find at a groomer at a resort, whereas telemark turns are a lot more intuitive in the powder. I think on hard pack, it's much more important to be able to balance over your edges. And also, possibly, you're going to have more forces on the edges at those tips of your skis that will want to turn them. When your binding connects a little closer to both the tip and the tail, it's easier to resist those forces against your edges at the tip and tail. When your binding only connects at your toe or forefoot as it does for the rear or inner foot uh, when the heel is raised in a telemark stance, then it takes a lot more deliberate, purposeful balance in order to keep the tips and the tails from overpowering the ski and overpowering your connection to it. If you don't take care when in the telemark stance to ensure that your weight distribution is allowing pressures to be evenly distributed along the length of the edge of your rear ski, then your rear ski is likely to get squirrely and shoot out one direction or another from under you. Parallel turns naturally preclude this from happening, not just because of the way the binding is connected and oriented to the ski, but also because in a parallel turn, your weight is distributed a little bit more downhill, allowing you to create angulation against that downhill ski and its edge, and basically taking the uphill ski out of the equation a bit. 
Now, I don't think I've fully wrapped my mind around why telemark turns feel so much more glorious in powder compared to parallel turns, but if I had to venture a guess, I think it's because your weight is distributed on two skis. So your weight is a little further back, a little more aft, allowing that front ski to turn more easily, allowing you to float higher in the powder because you're on both skis, and allowing you to play both skis against each other for forces that create the turn. Now that I've established the importance of having good balance for doing telemark turns when you don't have ideal snow conditions, next I want to talk about typical beginner telemark stances and the effect they have on balance, progressing up to the kind of stance that I have now. The first stance I'll talk about is the very timid beginner stance where your legs are barely spread at all because it feels so uncomfortable. It's honestly not necessarily that bad except that the trailing ski tends to get spread out to the side and all the weight is on that leading ski. The next stance in my progression was when I realized you could barely tell I was trying to telemark at all. So I did the most obvious thing and that was sending my trailing ski way back behind me. Since this meant it was unweighted, it would get squirrely at any amount of speed. And also, I was constantly using my poles for balance. To correct this, I tightened up my stance by bringing that trailing ski a little closer, a little further up, so that my thighs were closer together. My weight was now fairly evenly distributed between both skis. My balance problem now was that I would try to force my turns by leaning uphill or leaning into the turn. This would cause my skis to skid turn too quickly and too much, and I would have to catch myself as you'll see in this next clip. At this point, my only options to avoid falling flat on my face uphill were to either use my poles uphill and push myself back into the next turn, or to just bring that trailing ski up in a hurry as you saw. So I started to be aware that my uphill pulling wasn't considered kosher, although I still had no clue of its impact on my balance. Technically, I started downhill pulling, but by the way I was leaning and the way my upper body was facing, you could tell I was still doing it as if I was uphill pulling. You can totally downhill pull without having any angulation still, and I believe you can also uphill pull while still having angulation, although it's not ideal. And this brings me to the stance I have now. I am downhill pulling, I'm orienting my body towards the fall line, the direction that I want my next turn to go and I'm skiing with at least a little bit of angulation and I'm a lot more patient in my turns waiting for those skis to come around on their own riding those edges rather than trying to force the turn by leaning into it. Okay so where do we go from here? What's next for me? I guess it's kind of hard to predict the next breakthrough that you need to have otherwise you just get on with it and do it right away. Nonetheless I do have some goals that I want to work towards. Now that I know what it feels like to be balanced over my edges and I'm patient and waiting for my turn to come, I think the next thing is learning how to skid my turn a little bit or maybe do short radius turns so that I'm not so limited on firm snow like this right here. In order to ski fast snow when it's steeper, I'll need to be able to skid, stop the skid before it goes too far, change leads and edges into that next turn and keep it going. The final topic I want to try to discuss in this video is the different sensations and the different nuances when trying to telemark with lighter weight cross country type gear versus more heavy duty downhill oriented telemark gear. And this topic is going to have some tie in with the progression of stances that I just explained. For my first couple seasons of trying to telemark, my preferred skis to use anytime conditions were pretty firm were actually the higher cambered, longer, stiffer cross country types of skis as opposed to softer, turnier skis. I suppose people like me who start out trying to telemark on cross-country gear can probably get into the habit of leaning too hard into their turns. As long as you don't lean absolutely too far, the straighter tracking skis actually let you get away with this lack of discipline. But once you've developed that habit, when you start using turnier skis, you can't really get away with it anymore because the side cut is gonna cause those uphill edges to catch the firm snow and to send you into spinners like what you saw earlier in this video where I had to uphill pull or bring my trailing ski up really quickly to catch myself before I leaned over too far. And while we're on the topic, one other effect that skiing cross country type gear has had on my telemark turns is I think it's caused me to have a more upright stance. When using less resistant bindings like NNNBC bindings, if your trailing ski gets too far behind you, you really start to feel it getting bogged down in the snow. 
On more stiff and active Telemark bindings, this is prevented by the resistance created by the binding, for the most part anyways. And in my view, having a more upright stance isn't a bad thing at all. I think it allows you to be quicker to respond to changes in your balance. And it's also more like vertically balancing a long broomstick in the palm of your hand as opposed to something short like a pencil. My first ever gloriously successful Telemark turns, I think we're in early 2022. I was on plastic boots and Fisher S-Bound 112s for the first time, and I attributed my success to the gear that I was using. What I didn't realize at the time was that I would be chasing that same thrill with variable success for the months and seasons and years to come. The endless permutations of terrain and snow and gear and technique create in Telemark this variable schedule of reinforcement that really makes the sport pretty addicting. You can tell my wife that I do hope never to go overboard with it, but the good news for me is at least it's a pretty socially acceptable addiction.